All right, what's up, everybody? Long time no see. I'm excited. Just got back from vacation, so I hit the ground running this week. Had a bunch of test results come through, but I'm excited because I got some follow-up testing run on why myself. So I figured what I might want to do, because I had a lot of questions even while I was on vacation, talking about food allergies, food sensitivities, what's the difference, what does it look like, what test do you use? Well, guess what? I have that for you today. So uh, I did the Mac Daddy of testing on myself because I wanted to leave no stone unturned. And quite honestly, I wanted to see what the results were going to be. So um, I tested everything from your IgGs, uh, your IgEs, which is your anaphylactic. Uh, I have IgAs on there too. I have inhalant panels. I have basically everything you could possibly have tested in terms of foods or, or allergens or sensitivities. I have some mixture of all that all on this one test. And so I'm going to show you uh, you know, obviously I, I test my patients, but I want you to know that I also test myself because I do practice what I preach. It's how I stay as healthy as I do, and it's how I stay in shape. It's why I stay the way that I am. So I also am a firm believer that you have to practice what you preach. How can I tell a patient to run a panel that I'm not willing to run on myself? Now, I hate getting blood drawn. I absolutely despise it, even though it's funny, I, I do functional medicine, but I, I cannot do needles. It makes me want to pass out. So. I was fortunate I had a, a mobile phlebotomist that did a phenomenal job. She got in, got out real quick, didn't talk about what was going on with my veins, and I was happy. So uh, so today what I'm gonna do, like I said, I'm gonna share my screen with you guys. If you have questions through this, or if you're curious about something, or if you haven't had this test run, by all means, let me know. Now again, this is the Mac Daddy. There's no stone unturned on this test. So my, my most common test that I run is a 96, um, a food allergen panel or food sensitivity panel, and it's testing for your IgGs as well as uh, your IgAs. So it's a smaller version of the panel than what I have here, but it's still very effective. Now, if you want to run the Mac Daddy panel, then by all means, let me know and I can get that out to you. Um, it's really easy to do. You can do the blood draw or you can do a finger prick on the majority of our tests as well. So let's dive into this. Um, let's, I guess let's give it some context to why. Why would you want to know what, what you're eating or, or why would you want to know, know your food sensitivities? Well, for one, if you have any type of digestive distress, dysfunction, constipation, diarrhea, and you're not even aware that your normal bowel habits are supposed to be anywhere from two to four times a day, and you're going maybe two to four times every two weeks, you might want to get your food allergies or food sensitivities tested. Uh, if you eat certain things, you're like, I don't know if this is necessarily causing harm or not. You, you want to kind of have a more specific approach, then by all means, this is going to be the test for you. If you have highs, if you have bloating, if you have diarrhea, if you have constipation, like I already said, uh, brain fog, uh, you can't lose weight. You're on all these you know fad diets and you're eating pretty much the same consistent stuff on a daily basis. You can have a reaction to those foods that's going to cause inflammation. That inflammation is going to cause weight gain. So it's kind of shooting yourself in the foot. So I'd rather know this concrete approach. It's a medicalized approach to weight loss, if you will, but it gives you knowledge and power to know that what you're doing and what you're putting in your mouth is actually benefiting you and it's not causing you harm. Uh, now I've done videos like this in the past and what you're going to notice is I've upgraded my testing because why? Because it's better. And if I find a better test, then by all means, I'm going to get it for myself. I'm going to get it for my patients because better means better. So here's what it's going to look like here. So let me share the screen. I know it's been a minute since I've done this, but here we go. So as you can see, this is me. I'm not lying to you. Don't worry about my birthday. All right, so here's what we did. So there's a couple summary pages that we have on this test. Uh, summary pages are phenomenal. Uh, it's not something that we used to get on the old, uh, old blood print press that we did. Uh, it lets you know how close to having a reaction that you were. Now on this test, it's very important to know that you can have foods, okay, you can have food allergies, which are the ones that pop, closes off the throat and almost kills you. You can have food sensitivities, which is where your body disagrees with it and your immune system attacks it. And then you can have things like food intolerances. So food intolerance is most commonly referred to as like your lactose intolerant. You don't have the ability to be able to break down the lactose uh, sugar and it causes a reaction. It causes discomfort. So what we're measuring on this test is actually your immune system and how it combats these certain food allergies, okay? So again, this is myself. So again, if you think you don't have food allergies or food sensitivities and you haven't tested it, you're foolish. You're a foolish person. All right, so this is gonna be the summer page. There's five different pages that we're gonna be going through here, okay? These ones in particular are going over your IgGs as well as your IgAs. 
think of A as more acute. It's one of the more um, the more rapid acting, and it can also affect things like the nasal passages and the digestive tract. Anywhere there's that A, the secretory IgA, it's going to be in there. Uh, IgGs are more of like your permanent-ish delayed uh, sensitivities. It can hit you immediately, and it can hit you a little bit, you know, two, three, four days down the line. You get a headache from something that you ate on a Sunday. Then you have your IgEs, which most people would know this is what so they try to do the skin prick when you're young. Uh, they try to destroy your skin and make you have a reaction that kind of sucks. Uh, but these are the ones if you have a peanut allergy, a shellfish allergy, you're typically going to know that. Uh, but you can do a blood test on that too and see if you actually do have any antibodies being produced to the foods. So it's a little bit easier of a way, or if you want to kind of readdress and see, hey, do I still have that one? How, do, you know, how bad is it? This is a great test for that. So we're seeing on these pages that we have three different reactions across the board, okay? So we're gonna see some yellow dots. We're gonna see some peach-ish dots, okay? Those peach-ish dots are gonna be your high reactions and your yellow ones are gonna be your moderates, okay? High ones are gonna be your, um, your positives, if you will. And so there's different timetables on how long you have to avoid these certain foods for. Uh, if you have an IgE response, you typically don't get rid of it. Now, there has been in the past, I have worked with patients who have gotten rid of their IgEs. I still tell them to be very cautious of adding them back in because you may still have some hidden antibodies that are ready to express themselves. And unfortunately, when we do this time and time again, it's like throwing more and more antibodies into a bucket and all of a sudden, boom, it spills over. You get that reaction of, holy cow, this hasn't happened for years and all of a sudden, comes out of nowhere and hits you again. So I don't want that to happen to you also. So be aware of that if you have an IgE or if you've worked with me and you've gotten rid of it, just remember, try not to throw it in heavy duty. You can do it every now and then, but it's very rare that it will um, go away. And if it does, you want to respect that as, as what it is. Okay, now in order for you to have a moderate reaction, we're looking at the number to be anywhere from 11 to about 20, okay? 21 and greater is gonna be your positive fine, but in that sweet spot between 11 and 20 is gonna be your moderates. Those are the guys you're gonna to wanna to try to avoid for about three months or so, okay? So again, not a lifetime, and this isn't a 100% a guarantee that in three months these foods will be gone, but you can start working on either retesting them or adding them back in and see kind of like the elimination diet, see if your body has an abnormal response to it, okay? Now you're also gonna see on this test, maybe you have an eight, a nine, or a 10. Well, it's not pushing into that moderate reaction, but it could, if you eat it on a consistent basis, it could push over into a reaction. So if you're eating super flawlessly clean, you're avoiding all your food sensitivities, you're doing a great job, but say I'm pounding down eating, let's see, blackberries. I have a nine on blackberries. I'm just throwing them down all day, every day I'm throwing them in my smoothies, my shakes, pre-workout, post-workout, all the time, just blackberries all day, every day. Guess what? I'm going to slowly start to build an immune response to blackberries and I'll start feeling kind of sick and then I'll come back and I'm like, well, blackberries didn't test positive on the previous test, but now you can go back and say, well, on the summary page, it was very close to eliciting a response. So now I don't have to work, or now I know, okay, maybe that one did, pull it out for a couple of weeks and maybe try it again later. Now, the thing that a lot of people, bodybuilders, um, nutritionists, etc., they screw up on is they have you eat the same freaking thing every single day. That is not a diet that you want to be on. If you're eating the same thing every single day, you are constantly increasing your level of risk for developing food sensitivities to those foods that could potentially be healthy. So don't get stuck into that rut. If you're working with a nutritionist that's making you eat the same freaking thing every single day, smack them upside the head, save your money, go somewhere else, okay? It's very important to know you're not going to get results. You may, you know, you may at first start seeing some weight drop off, but those are the patients who are going to come back and say, well, I tried these diets or I tried this nutritionist and all of a sudden, whoop, you're going to cause your body to gain weight again because you then develop the sensitivity to this food. If you're a bodybuilder eating the same stuff every day, I'm sorry, it doesn't matter how much steroids or growth hormone you're taking, you're still causing inflammation. You're putting your body at a higher risk for sickness and disease. It's ultimately up to you how long you want to do that. Okay. Uh, summary page two, same thing uh, showing up on here. I'm going to show you the overall list. This can kind of get a little heady, uh, but again, I love it because it's a good resource to be able to go back to page three, uh, four, and five. Okay. Oh yeah, I forgot I did these guys too. So I also did food additives. So that's pretty cool too, right? So I have my inhalants on here. So your anaphylactic inhalants, and then I have food additives. So things like 
um, you know, your artificial sweeteners, your artificial sugars, um, you know, your guar gum, your different gums, aspartame. You can have a reaction to these foods, and guess what? You can freaking test it. How cool is that? Uh, not only do you know that those things are bad for you just in general, but, <laughs> but at the same time, you can test it, and it can confirm, yes, I have a negative reaction to that. Like for this, I have a negative reaction to, uh, what's this one, food additive. I don't even know what delta methrin is, uh, but that's what I can't do. And then blue number two. So if I had something uh, maybe in the past, like a Gatorade or something, and it had that particular one in it, guess what? I have an, an immune response to it. So if I drink it, it's going to cause inflammation and it's going to cause more harm than anything else. Okay. So let's go through. So this is how this test uh, typically looks here. So it's testing for my anaphylactics on this page. These are your IgEs. So it goes in the dairy category, the fish category, shellfish, mollusks. Uh, I love saying that word for some reason. Uh, your gluten-containing grains, your gluten-free grains, uh, your legumes, your meats. You can test that out there too. Miscellaneous. Uh, really cool. You can get your hops in there too. So I'm from Pittsburgh. So if I had a high reaction to hops, then I better stay away from some beers. Same thing with yeast. Um, coming down, nuts, spices, seeds, nightshades, uh, fruits. So vegetables and animal dander. So good thing I have a dog. I used to have two. Unfortunately, we put the one down. But fortunately, I don't have a, a reaction to my puppy. My well, not puppy. She's like 11 years old. But I love that dog. So I don't have to get rid of her. Yay! Um, mold okay so mold so mycotoxins mold toxins so you can have not only just mold exposure but then if you have more exposure compounded with mold uh anaphylactic or yeah anaphylactic bodies guess what you're gonna have a really rough day if you go into any buildings that have these particular mold spores in them okay all right and then your grass is here too so kentucky bluegrass is one of the most common uh in pa at least i know my dad has in his backyard it looks fantastic but if you have a reaction to it, then ugh, it's not the best for you. Uh, even tested against cockroaches, uh, mites, trees, and shrubs, and all kinds of goodies, okay? Didn't have any negative reactions to those, which is great. I didn't think that I would, but it was great, you know? Uh, and here's this guy right here. So if this was my normal 96 panel, and I had this amount on that panel, I'd be very concerned for the patient. But with the amount of foods that I tested, this is a very, 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 very minimal amount of positive reactions and moderate reactions in the grand scheme of things and half of the stuff it's going to be very easy for me to avoid so what's that look like i don't i'll be honest with you i don't know what a grapevine snail is i don't know when i would have eaten that uh blue mussels maybe there was just a mussels just to begin with turmeric so i cannot have turmeric that's funny right because if i have turmeric turmeric is anti-inflammatory not for me if i have turmeric what's it going to do to me it's going to cause inflammation in my body and that turmeric is not going to be combating it, it's just going to be adding to it. So turmeric is not good for this individual right here. It's great for, your, you know, your herbs. <laughs> then your positive finds here, my vegetables, seaweed, oh no, sushi, ow, right? Because I can't do, I can't do seaweed. So seaweed, most, most sushi rolls are wrapped in seaweed, so I can't do that myself. Sucks, I love sushi, but it'll allow me to avoid one of my other sensitivities, which is going to be rice. All right, so IgA of cumin in there too, so kind of derivatives of the turmeric family. Uh, the moderate finds tuna, anchovies, uh, flounder, and sardines, so I can't even eat, you know, those healthy fats, the anchovies and sardines. And tuna, I mean, quite honestly, is high in mercury anyway, so I don't always eat that. Uh, fruits, I mean, if I, if I tested this way and my son had blueberries and raspberries on here, he would probably disown me as a father because he loves those things. Um, I eat them, you know, now and then. But that's not going to be a hard one for me to avoid. Same thing with fig and capers. I'm pretty in tune with my body. Capers, in my opinion, never have agreed with me. Maybe they just don't agree with my taste buds. But yeah. Uh, so gluten-free starches, um, gluten-free alternative starches, tapioca and arrowroot. So this is interesting. So tapioca is used in a lot of things. Okay, It's a derivative of cassava root, actually. Uh, and arrowroot is a flour that a lot of gluten-free grains, or I'm sorry, gluten-free products are made with. So when I go to the store, I can't just snag something that says gluten-free on it. I have to pay attention to what flours and, and things and ingredients are in there. Otherwise, if I'm eating it, I'm going to be shooting myself in the foot thinking that I'm doing good, but all the while, I'm just hurting myself, right? Uh, brown rice. So some people say, well, brown rice, cool. I like white rice. Well, brown rice is actually the whole grain rice. White rice is actually stripped of it. It's the brown rice that's stripped of a lot of its uh, nutrients and also color. That's how you're going to get your white rice. So even if you have a brown rice allergy or sensitivity, you're going to want to avoid your whites, your jasmines, your basmati, 
even though it's delicious and I bought a rice cooker this year, I have to put it away for a couple months and not enjoy myself. Um, what else we have? Pinto beans, lentils, good. <laughs> uh, meats, duck meat, I, I don't remember. I think I had duck once or twice maybe. It's not a big you know fan of myself. Uh, dill, I, I despise pickles, so that's great. Uh, green tea, that's kind of that was kind of a hit to the, the, the you know the gut to me. I, I like green tea. Uh, Malas, squid, I think I've only, well, squid, calamari. I do like myself some calamari every once in a while. Um, seeds, so uh, rapeseed. So rapeseed's canola oil. Canola oil is not good for you anyway, so again, that's going to be one that's easy to avoid. And this guy, hemp. That sucks. So a lot of CBD oil are hemp derived. Um, so if they're hemp derived, I can't benefit from that CBD oil. So there are um, coconut oil alternatives or MCT oil alternatives that I can use. But if it is a hemp based CBD oil, then I can't I can't do it. Uh, shellfish, lobster, shrimp, and crayfish. I'm going to be going to Maine in August, so I can't have myself some lobster. Shrimp I was eating for a little while, and then I joked around having a crawfish boil. Well, I'm not going to be doing that this year because I have a reaction to it. Uh, vegetables, so carrots, romaine lettuce, that crushes a lot of salads for me. Shiitake mushrooms and shallots. And then last one on the, the shellfish side of things, it's very shellfish of you, is crab. So I can't do crab. So a lot of my seafoods, um, you know, fish, seafood, some fruits on there. Uh, really, ultimately, it's not going to be that devastating to me to avoid these foods. Like I said, we've, we tested so many fruits and vegetables, you can see it in a negative category over on here, and to just have this small amount really is not the end of the world to me. So I'm not too concerned, okay? Uh, going on here, here's the sensitivities again, just another way to take a look at them, just makes it so easy. So this is cool too, it tells you where you can find this, some precautions commonly found in, hidden sources, etc. Um, I didn't know this uh, until my wife told me is that this was a while ago, but red wine, a lot of red wine is run through, what's going on here? Whoa, let's see this again. Hmm. There you go. So a lot of red wine is run through uh, egg whites to extract the sediment. So you need to have vegan red wine if you have an egg allergy, which is kind of, again, a, a kick in the butt. Uh, hidden sources of lobster, it's not really that hard. Uh, to find lobster but yeah going the whole way through here going 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 um now the other thing that i kind of mentioned here and I, and I breezed past it as i'm going down here is that it said that i shouldn't be having or i didn't say that i shouldn't be having dairy now i don't have a reaction to wheat i don't have a reaction to dairy yay i used to have a really bad reaction however there's certain things that we test, even though it's on this list, there are healthy things that can be on here. And then there's also gonna be things like your, um, so you have your healthy things, and then you're gonna have your things like gluten, uh, your gluten grains, and you're also gonna have things like your dairy. Just because I don't have an immune response to them, they do still cause inflammation in the body, not just mine, but they have a tendency to cause inflammation. So therefore, I will still continue to avoid those because I know if I'm trying to be healthy, I cannot put things into my body that are unhealthy. That's like saying I didn't test for a Big Mac on here. So if I, if I didn't have a reaction to Big Mac, I'm gonna go down the street and get one. That would be foolish. So you don't wanna get stuck in that as well, okay? Uh, so lecithin. So this is a couple of the ones, the food additives that are in here. So where do you find these things? So, so egg, uh, lecithin, so from egg, a lot of times it's soy lecithin, but egg, um, it's going to be a portion of this guy here, blue number two, or indigo blue. Um, it's uh, food coloring that you can find, uh, some capsules, um, and then dye, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, kidney test, and detrol is an insecticide. So that's cool. Um, I don't really want that anyways uh, in my body. And then this is just te testing through, so fluoride, nickel, titanium, Alechithin, polysorbates, um, what else here? Ammonia, uh, MSG, two different types of MSG in there. Um, different, like other blues, reds, anato, beta carotene, um, other blues again, brilliant black, I've never heard of that one, but that's a cool sounding one. Uh, greens, reds, yellows, um, beta glucan, so carrageenan is on there. I don't have a reaction to that, that's kind of cool. Um, going through, cottonseed, guar gum, just again, giving you a kind of an idea, mastic gum um, or mastica is, is uh, another one that I can get away with, xanthan gum. 
So again, it's just these things that are allowing you to know that I can get away with eating these if I want to, but there are certain ones that I would definitely not put in my body, uh, especially the artificial colorings. And then you're, you're these guys over here, your ACE K, uh, a sulfame um, K or a sulfame potassium, cause your brain uh, to have damage. Aspartame, same thing, not gonna be a good one. Saccharin, but I can have stevia if I wanted to. Xylitol is okay with me. Sucralose is terrible. Uh, I would never have that anyways. But it was also borderline one. It tested almost high to 7.7 here. So again, just continue to go through this test. But ultimately, the thing here, the big picture, the, the overall thing here, is that at the end of the day, what we're dealing with is a record high level, in my opinion, of food sensitivities and things that are going on in the body. Now, when we're having, um, let me see here. <laughs> I don't know where all my boxes went. So if we're having um, if we're having issues with digestion, if we're having issues with hives, I just talked to the patient today, since retesting her food sensitivities, she hasn't broken out in hives anywhere near as much as she had before. And we still have some other things to work on, but these tests are massively powerful to do and they're really, really good tools to be able to allow you to get in control of your health again. So you don't even necessarily have to have a symptom right now because really, in order for your body to have a symptom, your body has to drop from 100% function down to at least 60% function before you express something. So I'm all about being proactive instead of waiting to be reactive, okay? And that's really our, our typical medical system nowadays is we wait until we have a symptom. Just with this freaking COVID, everyone's waiting until, oh no, there's a virus that could potentially kill me and take advantage of my terrible lifestyle for the last 40, 50, 60 years. Now what? Versus now in my 30s, I can be able to make sure that every single year of my life, I'm getting healthier and healthier and healthier and researching more and more and more so that way I can benefit myself, benefit my wife, my children, and my patients, anybody that I come across, I will then have the knowledge, ability, and power to not only have done it myself, but to be able to properly coach you through the same exact thing. So I wanted to try to keep this as short as possible. 20 minutes is what I was ultimately shooting for. I get distracted, I get excited. Um, so. I'm just really happy that you guys were, were back on here. I'm gonna start doing this a lot more frequently as well. I have so many test reads to do. I wanna go over this. I'm gonna start doing some, I don't know how to do it yet, but Instagram highlights, so that way people can see test reads, uh, examples of tests that I run, because I'm really trying to get into the functional medicine a little bit more, not a little bit more, but get it out there more, so that way patients can start coming and spending the, the money to actually get results versus coming back you know, five, 10, 15 years later, telling me I've had 37 UTIs in the past five years I've been to all these doctors, I've taken all these medications, what can you do for me? And I take a look at their stool test and I say, holy shit, what have they been doing to you this entire time? So instead of being a test on me, I'd rather get to the bottom of it, just like I got to the bottom of what was wrong with me back in the day, I'm constantly improving upon myself and I'm on always, always, always learning more and more and more. So if you have questions, you haven't had a food test run or if you haven't had one that was this in depth, reach out to me, direct message me, comment on here. I'll get you one of these tests. We can send it directly out to you. If you're afraid of leaving the house, we can do a blood print where they basically, you, you, you have the finger prick tool at the house and you can do it yourself. So that way you don't have to worry about going out. So that being said, thank you all. I love you all for, for being on here. Share this if you want to, but really this is just an educational tool to let you know that I'm going through this as well as you guys. So have an awesome day. If you haven't yet, get out there, enjoy the weather. It's freaking beautiful outside. Have a good one, guys.